Today, this will be a criteria video for open men's bodybuilding in 212. Fala aí, marombada! Suavidade vídeo novo se iniciando por aqui. Vídeo importantíssimo, galera. Vamos falar aí sobre Tyler Manion. Um tempo atrás aí ele fez um vídeo, deu as caras, cara. O cara tá fazendo um trabalho incrível, mano. Ele deu as caras e comentou ali sobre o novo peso da Classic Physique. Também um tempo atrás ele já deu as caras e falou da questão de peso também da Men's Physique, que vai ser introduzido em breve, e comentou o que um juiz espera para a categoria Men's Physique. E hoje, ele foi também ali ao seu Instagram, deu a cara e falou o que um juiz espera da categoria 212 e categoria Open, abrindo ali, literalmente, todos os critérios. A gente vai ver daqui a pouquinho o vídeo na íntegra. E um tempo atrás, o Gão deu uma aula grátis junto com o Fábio Gianola aqui, onde eles comentaram tudo que o juiz quer saber em todas as categorias, ó, um curso de arbitragem grátis, aula 1 e aula 2, que também acho importantíssimo você ir lá dar uma olhada. Mas sem mais enrolação, vamos ver aí o que Tyler Manion falou, rapaziada. Bom, rapaziada, eu fiz a tradução desse vídeo aí por meio de um aplicativo, de forma automática, eu já fiz algumas correções, mas se tiver mais alguma coisa errada aí, a gente corrige no meio do vídeo e vamos assistir junto. Hi, everyone. Tyler Manion here, FPC and IPV Pro League Vice President. Today, this will be a criteria video for open men's bodybuilding in 212. We're going to dive into what we're looking for in these classes. We're going to go pose by pose. And then I'm going to give you a breakdown on how an open bodybuilding show was judged between two competitors so you guys can get a good idea of what we're looking at. So first, we'll talk about the quarter turns. I know a lot of people have questions on what the quarter turns are used for. So basically, when we're at shows, We are bringing groups out for comparisons, and it's just in numerical order. We bring them out. We have them do front double bicep, quarter turns, back double bicep. Now, what we're doing here is we are using these quarter turns and the front and back double bicep to determine our callouts. So these poses are still important. And most likely, if you are not in the first callout from these quarter turns and these poses, You're not going to end up, you know, in the first group when we do the callouts at the show. It's going to be really hard to move up because in these quarter turns, we're, we're still looking for the same things we're looking for in all the other poses in bodybuilding. So obviously in these classes, we are judging things based off of size, shape, symmetry, proportions, and conditioning. And obviously density and separation play a huge factor along with these other things in all the poses that we're judging. So now we'll go through the mandatory poses to explain what we're looking for. First up is the front double bicep. Now in the front double bicep, what we're looking for here is obviously an X frame. We want to see size and separation of the muscle with a nice tight waist. And we want to see symmetry and proportion between the upper and the lower body. Next up is the front lat spread. So in the front lat spread, the main things we're looking for here is obviously the width, the width of your lats. We also want to see density of your arms, your shoulders, and your chest to go along with the width of your lats. We want to see balance between the upper and lower body, which means we want to see the separation and density and size of your quads matching what you're bringing in your upper body. Next up is the side chest. Now in the side chest, we want to see the size, the density, the separation of your shoulders, your arms, your chest. However, I think a mistake that a lot of people don't take into account is we are also looking at the width of your upper body in this pose from shoulder to shoulder. So a lot of guys like to push their shoulder over to try to squeeze their pec more, but that takes away from their overall size and the width of their upper body up top. Now on the legs, we want to see the size and the density of your side leg. Also, also the separation and the details in your side leg. And we want the upper and lower to be proportional as well. Next up is the back double bicep. Just like the front double bicep, we are looking for a nice X frame here. Frame. We want to see the depth and detail and thickness and width of your back in this pose. It's super important. But we're also taking into account the size and proportions of your arms and your shoulders compared to your back as well. And then we want to see the lower body. We're looking at the hamstrings. We're looking at the size of your legs from the back. The glutes should be in proportion with your legs. 
conditioning is huge here and brings out a lot of details in this pose. Next up is the back lat spread. Again, we're Treina looking glute. for the width and the depth of your back with a nice tight waist. So we're looking for an X frame again in this pose. Now your shoulders should be in proportion with your back in this pose as well. And again, we're looking at the size and the conditioning of your lower body and it should match your upper body. Next up is a side tricep pose. Now, I think a mistake that some people think about the side tricep pose is it is about who has the biggest tricep. That's not the case in this pose. We're looking at the whole entire body here. Again, we want to see the upper body. We want to see the proportions all flowing to each other, the arms, the tricep itself, the arms into the shoulders, your chest thickness. Here, your waist is exposed. You need to have a tight waist. You need to be blowing out and flexing your abs at all times. A lot of guys make the mistake where they're not controlling their stomach and they're not flexing their abs. The same thing goes from the side chest to the side tricep to the legs. We need to be in balance with the upper body. We want to see the size and the detail there. Some guys are also making a mistake of trying to do a hybrid ab and thigh side tricep pose. We don't want to see that. We want to see the actual side tricep pose when you're different. from the side, okay? Same thing as the side chest. We're also looking at your width up top from shoulder to shoulder. So hitting this pose is pretty hard, and I think a lot of the top pros can do a better job of hitting this pose to show off what they're supposed to be showing off. But the waist, the tight core, and the overall flow is very, very important in this pose. Next up is the ab and thigh. Now there are multiple different ways that you can hit this pose that are all acceptable. The main thing we're looking for here again is the shape of your upper body. We want nice tight abs that have depth to them. We want to see the detail and the size of your quads and your lower body. Now, if you're hitting this pose with two hands overhead, that is fine. We're also looking, you know, from top to bottom, which means from your hands clasped over your head, we're looking at, we can still see your biceps, right? So we're looking from the arms down, down to the chest, how you taper into your waist, how deep your abs are, what kind of density you have there into your lower body that should be balanced and mirroring the upper body. Now, some guys like to hit this pose with one hand on their head, turn a little bit to the side, almost with a half most muscular to it. That's fine as well. We're still looking for the same things. This time, we're probably gonna see more of your shoulders now because both your arms aren't overhead. So that accounts into giving you shape in this pose. But there's multiple different ways you can hit this. Some guys hit it with a vacuum. Some guys hit it with their abs uh, blown out and clenched. Either way is fine. It's all gonna depend on your physique and what looks best. As you see, our current Mr. Olympia champion has a crazy ab and thigh pose. He looks crazy with the <laughs> abs flex. He looks crazy with the back. So he's some... talking about pose maluca, but it's not even pose maluca. Here, Olympia has a pose maluca, not a pose maluca. It's a pose very good. Crazy ab and thigh pose. He looks crazy with the abs flex. He looks crazy with the vacuum. So some guys can pull off both. Some guys can only pull off one variation. It's going to depend on what's best for your physique. Last up is the most muscular pose. Now, just like the ab and thigh, there's multiple different variations that are acceptable ways to hit this pose. Some guys do arms down, hands touching, hands clasped. Some guys do hands on the hips and some guys do the crab most muscular. Grabbing, eh? So in the most yeah. muscular, we're looking for the same things in each different variation. We're looking at the size and density of your arms, your shoulders, your chest, how they flow. You need to have control of your waist. We can still see your abs in a lot of these poses. We're also looking up to your up to your neck, basically, looking to see how your traps flow into these poses. It comes more into play with the crab, most muscular, which you need to have solid traps if you want to hit that. The lower body, the same thing we're looking for in the other front poses with the quads, the size, the density, the proportion to match your upper body. Again, it all depends on what is best for your physique. Some guys hit multiple most muscular. Some guys should stick and stay with just one. Cara, que aula pesadíssima, mano. Tyler Manion deu show dessa vez, galera. Aula pesadíssima. 
agora é a gente estudar bastante aí. Não que a gente já não tenha uma noção, né? Inclusive pelos vídeos lá que o Hugo postou, as videoaulas que ele postou, já dava uma grande noção, mas agora é o homem falando, né, mano? É o homem, é o presidente ali falando. Então, a gente tem que se atentar no que ele falou aqui. O cara realmente abriu o jogo, abriu o livro. Se você chegou até aqui, me dá aquela moral, se inscreve aqui embaixo, deixa aquele comentário pesadão, aquele like bolado, te vejo no próximo. Um grande abraço, marombada.